The Beretta Company have always believed in craftsmanship. And although they have invested in technology in order to keep their guns affordable, they never want to lose this all-important piece of their heritage. To this effect, they created Beretta Due, a second premises just down the road from the main factory. Beretta Due is home to their master gunsmiths, master engravers, and an array of other master craftsmen. It's also home to their engraving school, giving new talent a chance to grow and shine. They make a variety of guns here, from the completely hand-built SO series, to the stunning Mark Newson side-by-sides, and to my surprise, even the DT-11 is finished in here. This is the home of Beretta's premium guns. Welcome to Beretta Due. That means Beretta 2. You guys will know it better as the Beretta Custom Shop. Inside these gates is the factory where the SO is built, the SL is built. This is where all of the handwork and hand finishing and the super special guns we all love are made. Let's get inside. Although it's situated in the same valley, as you walk into Beretta Due, you are faced with a very different atmosphere to the main Beretta factory that we took a look at last time. Walking through a small park, you're faced with the engraver's studio in front of you and the main workshops to your right. As you enter the workshops, you're greeted by a big reception area. Filled with everything Beretta. Near every wall in this building is made of glass. So you can see the gun makers working away on some of their beautiful projects. The atmosphere is on point. In this building are a lot of workbenches, all divided into different assembly lines. There's rooms filled with walnut for clients to choose, a bespoke gun case making department, and the stock making and oil finishing rooms, as well as an area for servicing and maintenance. We are gonna to start today on the production line. And there are three production lines here at Beretta 2. You have the SL3 production line, the SO production line, and the DT-11 production line. And that was most interesting to me is that all of the DT-11s get a serious amount of handwork. So that is where we're gonna start. Come on. So these guys are capable of turning out somewhere between eight and 12 DT-11s a day. And there's 13 people on this production line. There's six on the SO and there's four on the SL production line. A few of them aren't here today because it's hunting season, which to me is indicative of the passion that we've seen from everybody here. They all love the guns, they all use the guns. So stage one is joining the barrels to the action. And as you can see right there, this is a serious process. It takes about 90 minutes. The action comes in from Beretta 1 across the road, fully finished. The barrels, however, do not. So the barrels have all of the flats filed up, all of the hooks fitted onto the actions, just to make sure that when these two things clip together, they do so as one. They want them to come together as one. Whereas something like the silver pigeons that we've seen, are put together and machined to a standard that they, they just go together and you can sort of interchange parts to a certain extent. Every DT barrel is mated to every DT action and those two things will stay as one for life. It's, it's a fascinating process. Stage two and here we are. The guns are fitted up with the forend metal work, they're fitted with firing pins and a dummy cross bolt. But they're actually sent off to proof. This one has already been. They go to proof twice. This is fascinating. The first time, they check the metallurgical properties, the hardnesses, they check that the chambers are correct, and they semi-stamp it. 
meaning they put a one proof mark and a couple of other little marks, but not a full proof. It then comes back, they check the rib and finish the barrels. And let's go and find a set that have been blacked. And here is a barrel post first proof that has been blacked. After this, there's a number of processes left to do. You have the machined rib, you have the black barrels, but you need to jewel the sides, polish the ejectors, get them timed, fully assemble the gun, and more importantly, put the actual cross bolt that deserves to be in the gun or needs to be in the gun in the gun, not the oversized or dummy. Once that is done, the whole gun is put together, the woodwork's put on, it's checked for operation, and it's sent back to Beretta 1. There, it's put through rigorous testing. And by rigorous testing, they shoot it themselves, they test it themselves to make sure that it is up to spec before it finally goes to the proof house to be proofed. That's three shots through each barrel, stamped with the high pressure, fleur de lis stamp, the barrel weight is added, the bore sizes are added, it then comes back to here, it's boxed up, and it's sent off. One of the things I learned earlier that makes this even more special is how hard it is to get a job on this production line. You have to pass a number of tests and be good enough to stay once you get the job. You need passion and you need skill, and those two things need to coexist to be able to get a job on this line. Every time Beretta does a hiring drive, hires people to go and work in Beretta 1 on the standard production, they will give people the chance to come and, and try this. But it's basically the special forces of gun making. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the trolleys? These are really nice. They're really uncomplicated wooden gun trays. You've got the action fore end in the top, the barrel up the side, and the ejector work in a tray underneath. It shouldn't be that exciting, but this stuff is what really excites me. Organization in gun building. And just, I have no idea why I want one, but I want one. It's become evident to me that the Beretta ethos is rooted in being proud of one's work and one's workplace. And this room is no exception. You could eat your dinner off this floor. For a gunmaker, this is a dream setup. Everything in perfect order and every tool where it should be. For a gun lover, this is exactly the spectacle you're after when you're buying your dream gun. So we've had a look at the GT11. The SO production line is a bit different. So there are much fewer people who work on it, six as opposed to 13. The action for a DT11 comes in finished from Beretta 1. The SO action is done here. There's a lot more hand finishing that is involved. The barrels, the same. A lot more hand finishing that's involved. If DT11s can be done at eight to 12 a day, SOs, you're looking at about four to six a month. There's that much more hand work and hand finishing that goes into them. They're amazing. They are, oh, they're certainly one of my dream guns. But you can get a flavor of it in the DT, and I perhaps didn't realize that. But now I do. The majority of the barrel work is done over at Beretta 1, but I've got a couple of examples here to show you. Mostly the difference between a monoblock and a chopper lump. The monoblock, very famous, developed by Beretta and made famous by Beretta, is simple. You machine this, a monoblock. You then take two tubes, those tubes are tapered to the correct tape of the barrel. They're already drilled and the bore is done. And the multi-choker system is already put in the end. They're quite simply sleeved into the action, joined together, and then laser welded at the front and back. There is a lot of benefits to this. The biggest is ease of putting it together. The cost, the actual genuine cost factor of making a monoblock is lesser. The strength, fantastic. The SO series, however, is done with a dovetail style barrel, meaning you have two parts. These are made of one piece each, and they have a little dovetail joint, and those two are then joined together. It is a more complicated process. It takes a lot more effort, a lot more skill, and a lot more processes to get it where it needs to go. People will say it's more accurate because your tubes and your blocks are all machined together so you can get them absolutely perfect. But you still need to braze on mid-ribs, join them, and actually regulate them regardless. Most of it is you end up with a more pure barrel feeling, or at least this is what people say. The big difference that most people will recognize is that on a monoblock gun, you have a two-section rib because you have 
a rib on your monoblock, you end up putting a rib on your barrels and you have the join line that on a Beretta is engraved over. On an SO gun, the rib is one beautiful piece. It is seamless. And to be honest, it is nicer. Regardless of whether it is better or not better, it is nicer. And when you're buying a gun that is arguably one of the best products in the world, you want it to be the nicest. The stock is as important to most of us as the action style and the engraving that adorns it. Beretta Douay continues the great tradition of hand-built, hand-fitted stocks, all done in-house by master stockmakers. We'll look at wood selection a little later, but this is where a lot of the custom woodwork is done in this beautiful little room. And we've got a lot to cover. And we're gonna start with this. This is an SO. Every SO is made from a blank. SOs are made to measure. Every single one is a custom order or a custom job for themselves, be it a showpiece or whatever. So the DT11s and the SL3s come hardened at this stage. The action will be finished when it's added to either a blank or a semi-machined stock. The SO is not, and as you can see, is unengraved. That is because the SO series is a side lock, does not have a stock bolt, and it has to be jointed up to the woodwork, A, significantly tighter, it's a lot more work goes into this, and B, they get this woodwork so close to this metal work, they wouldn't want to risk damaging any engraving or anything yet finished. Time-wise, you're looking at somewhere between 12 and 24 hours to get this blank on an SO into a stock, maybe a little more for an SO. With the stock bolted actions, if you have any a slightly pre-machined stock, that's about eight hours to get that made to custom measurements. There are, of course, exceptions to that. Everybody's measurements are different. Most people's are quite simple, but you then get guns like this that require a blank like this. You can soon see that there's gonna be a lot more material to remove. And as such, a stock like this took 24 hours of work, hand work. And this still needs to be checkered, still needs to be finished, and still needs to be oiled. But it just goes to show what these guys are capable of. Again, more complex, more time, more time, slightly higher cost. That's just the way these things go. But the sky really is the limit here at Beretta 2. So this craftsman here is currently working on an SL3. This was a pre-machined stock, so you've got about eight hours of hand work to get it into the measurement. I love watching stockers work. Although it seems strange to say it in 2022, this is designated a lady's job and it has been a trade passed down from mother to daughter for generations. There's multiple reasons behind this, other than tradition is slightly smaller hands, slightly better concentration, and they're clearly better at it, according to Beretta. But not only according to Beretta, every factory I've been to, every person I've spoken to, the checkering is ladies' work. And she is absolutely amazing at it. Although I emphasized earlier that the SO series are completely hand joined into the actions, the same goes for the pre-machined headwork. They are actually then modified by hand to create the perfect fit. This avoids cracks, improves recoil, and generally, well, it's quite important to have the perfect wood to metal sort of fit around the sides, but also in the action. And as you can see on this action here, they do that by dyeing the inside or powdering or inking the inside, mating it up, and filing down the high spots. No different to how they do with the metal in there. Part of any premium journey can involve choosing your own wood. So welcome to the first of two wood selection rooms, which could be the hardest room for a stock blank to get into in the world. So welcome to the second wood room. This is the home of the specially selected grade four and grade five stock blanks. Every single one goes through a series of tests before it's even allowed in here. The first test is that it is x-rayed and that is to see that there is consistent structure through the wood to make sure that there is no holes, no pores. Secondly, which is pretty standard, a humidity or a moisture content test then a density test, and then a whole other series of small little tests to make sure these are perfect pieces of wood. And as such, you won't see anything too radical in here. Well, I say that, look at that. 
but it is also perfect. The grain structure through the head is perfect. I mean, that is as good as a piece of wood needs to look ever. You have two categories of grade five, grade five and grade five SO10. SO10s obviously as side locks don't have a stock bolt holding them all together. They are held together with, with pins, screws. And so you'll notice on all of these, they have a very solid grain structure around the headwork, even more so than the other guns. It just keeps them perfect and stops them from snapping. And again, you don't want guns stocks to break ever, unless so on something like an SO10 that you've waited somewhere between 14 and 19 months for. Next, we have the pairs. And the pairs is an even harder selection to get into because they're not just looking for similar looking pieces of wood or wood that are cut sort of book match. They need all of their densities and such to be identical because when Beretta make a pair, they allow a gram of tolerance. One gram of difference between the guns. One gram. And that's why when you buy a Beretta pair, there is a 20% surcharge because it's not the same as just making two single guns. To find the perfect match pair of wood is hard enough. And then to make them the same, but with one gram of tolerance, that is true gun making art right there. And if you thought that was hard, imagine how hard it would be to find trios of wood that match the same specification. After that, you have the grade four pairs the grade four singles. These are more for the SL series, SL3 series, and the DT11Ls. The one thing we haven't shown you on this trip, Beretta's Wood Factory. They turn out something like 700,000 stocks for Beretta group guns a year. That is, um, that's a lot of wood. We left the room with the best wood in the world and went next door to the second room of stock blanks. Here we have a rack of semi-finished guns. We saw them making the stocks in the other room to measurements. Obviously for clients here, it's a very different thing because they can help tweak things along. But if you make a gun to measurements and it is possible for a client to come in to do a, a final check, they'll leave it in this condition. The client will come in, they'll do the final tweaks and then go down into the underground range out the back to shoot some pattern plates just to double check that these things are actually on the money. A very interesting process. It's always nice to see custom socks. Custom socks always do something for you because it's so personal. You can sort of see the things and actually how weird and wonderful humans are. Once a stock blank is crafted to the desired shape and fit, it needs to have a finish applied to protect the wood from the elements. As a customer, you can choose what they put on here. So if you want lacquer, they will do so, but a quality oil finish with dozens of layers of oil, hand rubbed over many weeks, is what they specialize in here at Beretta Due. It's all well and good looking at these glorious guns, but they are designed to be shot. So we went to San Frutuoso Shooting Ground to have some fun. One of the most common questions we have received over the years is, is it worth buying a really good gun? I think to this point, we've shown you the answer is yes. However, because we're in Italy and we're at a shooting ground, let's shoot some and see if we can explain why, again, the better guns are better. I was really looking forward to shooting Carlo's Carbon SL2. But first, we took some DT-11s for a spin. So Roberto, most of the viewers will be familiar with the DT-11. Can you justify its existence to me and its price? The best two things and what make the DT-11 the DT-11, it's um, that technology on the barrels. It's a Stelium Pro. You have a long forcing cone that goes all the way almost to the chokes. What happens is when you put a lot of pressure and you get that constriction on the barrel, it's something, it's a sweeter movement through the pellets on the barrel. Mm -hmm. So you deform the, the pellets a little bit less. And when they fly, they're not deformed, so they're more aerodynamic and they can reach longer distances. And then the second thing, which is very important, the detachable trigger. What you get here when you're shooting competition is not a hunting. Uh, you get many shooters that are shooting over 30,000 rounds a year. 
and as it can happen with any mechanical piece, you're likely to break a piece. And usually, in my experience, they break when you're at the worst time. So when you're about to get into a shoot-off, when yeah, you're about to final. get into a final, if something goes wrong, you're able to switch the trigger group, put the new one in, and keep on going as if nothing happened without having to change guns or, or, or doing something weird with your gun or wasting time. Ah. Uh -huh high-level competition shooters buying spare trick units with it or is that when it yeah. in? Sometimes they, they want to have the difference between the silver and the, and the carbon one. Sometimes they want to have different weights on the triggers. They just, uh, they, I mean, the number of reasons it depends on but the person. All of us are yeah. a bit yeah. anal when it comes to yeah, these exactly. silly little things. Exactly. Without so, justification, it and, doesn't and, matter. And the best thing is we're always, uh, each of one of us is always right. Why carbon fiber? It seems to be Beretta's move over the last few years. Um, I understand it for ribs and barrel weight, but why a carbon fiber? A tricky unit basically because you lose 100 grams on, on, on a, from 70 to 100 grams on a single trigger group so that means obviously in sporting it's you're looking for heavier guns but when you have skid shooters or other disciplines yeah. where they have to mount really quick they, they might be looking for for lower weights it can help you with the mount can help you moving transition from high to low or pull to mark targets and stuff like that so it depends and it comes to taste it's really cool it's really cool it's it is really definitely cool. really cool it's trendy right now. You can find yeah, it I mean, trendy. Uh, it will be trendy forever, carbon yeah. fiber. Real yeah. carbon fiber will yeah. be trendy forever. Fake yeah, carbon yeah. fiber? Not so sure. Should we shoot them? Let's cool. go. Let's give them a go. The DT-11 Black is unarguably a great gun. Super smooth to shoot, lively yet steady to move. It's got great stock dimensions out of the box and a grip shape that fills my hand perfectly. You can't be mad at its looks and its many accolades across clay sports speak for themselves. So halfway through that course, I changed to the 694 because, you know, we needed some B-roll and I, I shot one stand. I wanted to get back to that. There was such a difference. Yep. And I understand there's a difference, but that is such a sweet gun. Yeah, especially when you're shooting long targets, it has such a smooth balance. It seems like it almost does the work itself. Yeah. And yet, where the 604 has a steel rib, it has that extra barrel weight, and it's very nice, but with that, you can rip into stuff. Yep. And that, that's just, it felt so good. You felt, as you said, you felt dangerous. Yep. You picked up, you know, yeah, I'm going to break you. Yeah, that's right. As you've realized over the years, I love guns. Especially something new and something different. But this gun is something else. Carbon stock, blacked everything, custom carbon case. Oh my goodness. This is the coolest Beretta I've ever seen. It is, it is. Thank Tell you. Tell me the story of how you, it came to be. Well, first of all, you know, the SL2 platform was designed a few years ago and, and uh, subsequently launched last, uh, last summer. We, we started off with a launch edition, so 50 pieces, all with the number engraved on the bottom of the gun and that we sold to our top clients and our PB selection customers. And uh, obviously I, I asked for one. I mean, I, I love shooting, I love uh, trap, I love skeet, all types of shooting. And we've just discovered so, you're quite talented. Yeah, uh, well, we'll see. At the same time, we were in touch with car company, the Lara, that had uh, just developed for us a carbon fiber stock for our uh, Olympic athlete, Johnny Pellielo, and he got his DT11 with carbon fiber stock. And so I thought, you know, we have the new platform. I love carbon fiber, let's, let's do, let's put the two things together and I asked them to design this. It's all made to measure, so the stock is made for me. I chose some extra details on the gun that other launch edition guns don't have to make it even more unique. For example, here I chose to put uh, the rims of my, of my Alfa Romeo Giulia car and the opening key is, uh, is personalized with the three arrows and here I put my initials with the zombie green. With regards to the carbon fiber finishing, I actually asked to put a lucid finish on it. Obviously it is an extremely delicate gun, but at the same time I think the lucid finish on it just brings a whole new level to it and it, and it looks stunning. With the gun we have a premium atelier. Amazing, this case. Yeah, in company, this one we did it ourselves, and uh, this one is 100% carbon fiber, and you can, I mean, when, when you lift it, you can feel it. It's, 
extremely light. Obviously very delicate, so not, not the best way to carry it around when you go shooting, but I mean, it looks amazing for me. It, it, you can't have a gun like that and yeah. not have a case like this. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the coolest thing about this gun is when you put it on the gun rack with the other guns and it just, you know, it's the only thing you see. Um, it's completely different and, uh, and, and also shooting it is just, I mean, the SL2 already is a great platform, but the carbon fiber just gives it that extra, I don't know. Uh, Something. Yeah. It's hard to explain. It, it it's, is. It's it so is. smooth to move. It's so special. It shoots great. I'm, I'm uh, super happy with it. And now I guess it's your turn to try it. I am looking forward to this. Yeah. It's, it's a gun that doesn't matter whether you shoot well with it, uh -huh. but you'll probably shoot quite well with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you will, you will. This SL2 Carbon is technically a trap gun, but I didn't think these sporting players would mind if I shot it at them. It moved as well as it shot, turning clays into dust time after time. Oh. Apart from when I missed. When it comes to that level of Beretta, mm -hmm. everything is possible. 100%. I mean, we keep doing exercises on pistols, on shotgun, to show you know our followers on Instagram and all our, our clients what we can do kind of to, to, to stimulate and to give them an idea of, you know, the extent to which we can custom and personalize any type of gun. And um, I mean, literally any type of engraving, finishing, color, whatever you can imagine, I guarantee that uh, our, our experts can uh, satisfy your request. It is a fascinating, fascinating company. Yeah. And it's a genuine privilege to be talking to one of the Berettas. That Carbon SL2 was set in a wicked carbon case, which I was surprised to learn is made in-house. Back in 2017, Beretta decided to start making their own cases instead of outsourcing. This is a seriously skilled job, and as such, they placed this department at Beretta Due. A standard case takes about 16 hours to make, but standard is a rare occurrence here. You can have anything you want. Leather tooling, custom stitching, pyrography, painting, carbon fiber. This list is endless. If you thought choosing your dream gun was hard, choosing your dream case could be harder. So we were just in there. That is where the assembly lines are. We're gonna take a quick break and go up here. This is the Beretta engraving studio. It's on the top floor because that's where the best natural light is. When you enter an engraver's studio, you have to respect that this is an artist's domain. It's clear that Beretta as a company respect that too allowing these guys freedoms that weren't evident in other parts of the factory. This studio was filled with natural light and was divided up into sections. There's also a corner of the office filled with computers, where the Beretta laser engraving patterns are designed. Each tiny vector is put into place here to create some of the iconic designs we know and love today. Welcome to the Beretta Engraving Studio. They have had an in-house engraving team since the 1940s, and you can really tell from the quality of their guns that these guys are the best in the world. We're gonna have a little chat with a couple of the guys here about some of the techniques and how they take a blank piece of metal and turn it into a work of art. The manager of the engraving workshop has worked here for 27 years and took me through the different methods of engraving. Talk me through some of the engraving techniques, if you will. Hammer and chisel, this technique. For example, English scroll with a bouquet. 
and very fine scroll or is possible very deep scroll example this piece is so this is a quick way of removing metal the second technique use the bulino this tool mm -hmm. with loop it's possible to put 12 line per millimeter for black and then crossing line for different shadow. I presume this is a much slower process. Yeah. And so how long does a bird like this take? Example, this piece is 40 hours. One week for that one, one bird. Exactly. For one piece it's possible to start 100 hours, arrival 1000. Depends, wow. depends the project. So a gun can take nearly a year to engrave sometimes? Yes, different idea. What I found very interesting is that it's done. Yes, this is clear. Yeah, line by line by line. How mm. long does it take to get this good? Five years of training and you for can do that. all technique. Okay. You suddenly start to appreciate why these guns cost what they cost because of this amount of your life that's gone into it. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Engraving is such a special art form that every time I meet a master of that art, I am in awe of their talents. But what I have learned is that designing a quality laser engraving pattern is an incredible talent as well. to sit there and watch somebody design a new game scene for the more mass-produced guns right next to somebody chiseling away at steel made that process feel much more special. Overall, this building was awesome and some of the things we saw in here, especially the ones we can't share with you, are out of this world. Beretta is an unusual company. Most gun makers market themselves to a particular person in the market. Beretta instead cover every angle and cover it well. From an affordable semi-automatic all the way up to the guns made here in Beretta Due. For a company that makes the quantity of guns they do in their main factory, to still commit to the fine art of artisan gun making, is a testament to just how much this company loves guns. This trip fulfilled a dream of mine and I got to see firsthand how some amazing guns were built. From the stunning SO with its hand engraving and its X-ray tested wood, to the outrageously bold Mark Newson side by side. Every gun that comes through Beretta Due gets treated to a huge dose of passion, even the DT-11. Thank you for coming along on this journey with me and I hope to see you next time.